Hello everyone, welcome back. How are you? In this video, we will be talking about the prohibited acts and transactions na dapat malaman ng isang public officials and employees. And at the same time, you have to know this one. Since party ito ng civil service examination under general information which is the Republic Act 6713. In our previous video, we've tackled the eight norms of a public officials and employees which was prescribed in the constitution and existing laws. And this is a sequel of our first video on Republic Acts 6713 and the link can be found on the description box below. So now, you will also learn some of the prohibited acts and transactions in the government and their respective punishments. Na kung saan ito ay tinakda ng batas na isang undesirable para sa isang empleyado ng gobyerno. These prohibited acts and transactions can be found in Section 7 of Republic Act 6713. Una, financial and material interest. Public officials and employees shall not directly or indirectly have any financial or material interest in any transaction requiring the approval of their office. So, what does it mean? Ang ibig sabihin lamang nito, there should be no conflict of interest. So kapag ikaw ay isang public official o isang public employee, you must not engage in any financial or material interest sa kahit na anong government transactions. Halimbawa, kung ikaw ay isang school administrator, tapos in your office, you are one of the several people in charge of the approval process for purchasing school supplies or maybe equipment. Tapos, ikaw pala ay isa ring owner or co-owner ng isang tindahan ng mga school supplies and equipments in which your school will be purchasing the same. Yan po ay napakalaking conflict of interest. And when does conflict of interest happens? Ang conflict of interest ay nangyayari kapag ang mga personal na interest ng isang individual ano, could compromise his or her judgment. Decisions or maybe an actions in the workplace. That is why pinagbabawal po ito sa isang opisyales o empleyado ng gobyerno. Now, what are the penalties na ipapata once you violate this act? First offense is a suspension from six months and one day up to twelve months, and the second offense is a dismissal or termination. At ang pinaka common na dahilan ng conflict of interest ay yung tinatawag na self dealing. It occurs when a management level professionals accept a transaction from another organization that benefits him or herself solely and harms the company or the company's clients. So next we have outside employment and other activities related thereto. Public officials and employees during their incumbency shall not. First. Own, control, and manage or accept employment as officer, employee, consultant, counsel, broker, agent, trustee, or nominee in any private enterprise regulated, supervised, or licensed by their office unless expressly allowed by law. Second, engage in the private practice of their profession unless authorized by the constitution or law provided law. That such practice will not conflict or tend to conflict with their official functions. In other words, your primary source of income should be your work in the government, unless otherwise you are allowed or authorized by law or by your immediate head to do other transactions outside of your employment. At dapat iconsider din na labas na ito sa working schedule or working hours to avoid disturbances sa iyong official na trabaho sa gobyerno. Bawal ang magpraktis ng propesyon kung ito'y di pinahihintulutan ng komisyon o batas. Kahit ito'y pinahihintulutan, kailangan di dapat taliwas o salungat sa ating tungkulin. Third, we have recommend any person to any position in a private enterprise which has a regular or pending official transaction with their office. So, bawal po ang mag-recommend ng sino mang tao to any position na merong regular or pending official transaction with their office. Unless such recommendation or referral is mandated by law, international agreements, or maybe commitment and obligation, or as part of the functions of his or her office. At tandaan na nacheck din po kasi yan ng Civil Service Commission and Commission on Audit. Sa madaling salita, there should be no hidden agenda in your workplace. 
And remember na ito po ay patuloy na ipinagbabawal sa loob ng isang taon pagkatapos na magbitiw, magritero sa pampublikong katungkulan. Ano mang paglabag dito ay magiging batayan para sa administrative disciplinary actions if you are planning na pumasok ulit sa government service. Next, we have disclosure and or misuse of confidential information. Public officials and employees shall not use or divulge confidential or classified information officially known to them by reason of their office and not made available to the public. Either, first, to further their private interests or give undue advantage to anyone, or second, to prejudice the public interest. Kaya wag maging marites, ano po? That is why minsan bago tayo mag-relay ng mga information sa iba, we should verify first sa ating immediate head or supervisor if that information ay allowed na i-disclose to the public. And if it happens that you disclose an information which is not intended to be disclosed, ay nako po, you are legally liable for such violation. So, to make it simple, hindi mo dapat i-disclose ang anumang impormasyon sa anumang oras, either directly or indirectly na ibubunyag o gawing accessible ng sino mang tao ang anumang confidential na impormasyon maliban kung hayagang pinahintulutan ka ng iyong company. Next, we have solicitation or acceptance of gifts. Public officials and employees shall not solicit or accept, directly or indirectly, any gift, gratuity, favor, entertainment, loan, or anything of monetary value from any person in the course of their official duties or in connection with any operation being regulated by or any transaction which may be affected by the functions of their office. That means... All public officials and employees must not accept any gift kung ang kapalit ay ang pagpapadali ng transaksyon sa isang opisina. Halimbawa na lamang, may kliyente ka tapos bibigyan ka ng sari-saring mga prutas at gulay. Tapos sinabihan ka na, Sige na sir, i-priority mo lang yung mga documents ko or mga papers ko sa office mo. Iririgalo ko na sa iyo itong mga prutas at gulay na dala ko sir. So, ayon. Yan po ay hindi allowed sa isang government employee na tumanggap ng anumang regalo. Abay lalo na kung monetary, ibig sabihin pera na ang involved. Kagaya nga ng sabi nila, money is the root of all evil. Because the love of money or an excessive focus on wealth can lead to negative outcomes such as greed, selfishness, and unethical behavior. Nako, kapag pera na ang pinag-uusapan, nakakasilaw talaga. At meron din kasing mga pagkakatao na mahirap tanggihan. Yan ang katotohanan. Ano po? Kung titingnan kasi natin ang anti graph law, acceptance of any form of gifts from your client are not allowed. Pero kung ang gift naman ay galing talaga sa puso ng kliyente mo or just a mere appreciation dahil magaling ka magtrabaho, merong mga ganyang instances eh. At walang anumang kondisyones na hinihingi, okay lang yon. But to generalize na kasi, wag na lang tanggapin. Kasi habang tumatagal, mahuhulog ka na sa bitag kasi mapapalapit na loob mo sa nagbigay sa'yo. At possible, you will be prioritizing him or her soon sa kanyang official transaction sa iyong opisina. Kaya bawal talaga na manghingi o tumanggap ng regalo sa kung kanino mang tao na may koneksyon ang opisina o maapiktuhan ang palakad ng inyong opisina. At ang pagtanggap ng anumang regalo ay violation of Republic Act 3019 or also known as Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act under Section 3 Paragraph B na nagsasabing directly or indirectly requesting or receiving any gift, present, share, percentage or benefit for himself or for any other person in connection with any contract or transaction between the government and any other part wherein the public officer in his official capacity has to intervene under the law. So that means, to make it safe, never accept, yun ang mahalaga. Ang sunod na tatalakay natin ay ang statements and disclosure. What is it all about? Public officials and employees have an obligation to accomplish and submit declarations under oath of, and the public has the right to know their assets, liabilities, net worth, and financial and business interests, including those of their spouses, and of unmarried children under 18 years of age living in their households. 
Ibig sabihin nito na ang mga empleyado ng gobyerno ay kinakailangan na magsumiti ng tinatawag na salen. At yan po ay dapat under oath or manumpa na idinideklarang mong totoo ang mga information sa iyong salen or statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth. Now, ano ho ba itong salen? Ito po ay isang declaration of your assets. Ibig sabihin lahat ng pinagkukunan mo ng income. Kasama na rin dyan ang lahat ng mga liabilities mo. Kagaya ng loans and mortgages, lahat-lahat po. And lastly, net worth, kung magkano na lang ang kabuoang net income mo. At tandaan, nakasama pa rito ang asawa at mga anak mo na 18 years old pababa. Pero kapag 18 years old pababa, ngunit hindi naman nakatira kasama mo, they are excluded. At kapag above 18 years old naman, kahit nakatira pa sa inyo, hindi rin po kasali. Statements of Assets and Liabilities and Financial Disclosure Sinasabi kasi dito na all public officials and employees except those who serve in an honorary capacity, laborers and casual or temporary workers shall file under oath their statement of assets, liabilities and net worth and a disclosure of business interests and financial connections and those of their spouses and unmarried children under 18 years of age living in their households. So, hindi na po kasama ang mga empleyado under honorary capacity. Ito po yung mga taong nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno ng walang service credit at walang bayad. In layman's term, honorarium lang po ang kanilang natatanggap. At hindi na rin kasama ang mga laborers, casual or temporary workers. Siyempre, magkano lang din naman ang kanilang sahod para magpa-file pa ng salen. Now, ang salen ay dapat naglalaman ng mga sumusunod. First, real property, its improvements, acquisition costs, assessed value, and current fair market value. Second, personal property and acquisition cost. Third, all other assets such as investments, cash on hand or in banks, stocks, bonds, and the like. Fourth, liabilities, and lastly, all business interests and financial connections. At kailan dapat pinafile? Within 30 days after assumption of office, on or before April 30 of every year thereafter, and within 30 days after separation from the service. If ever, ang mag-asawa ay parehong opisyal or empleyado ng gobyerno, sila ay maaaring maghain ng mga kinakailangang documents separately or jointly. And if ever naman na ang asawa ay nasa private institution, you'll still file the same. At dapat siyang pumirma sa salen dahil ang inyong mga pag-aari ay sakop ng Absolute Community of Property or in short ACP where basically the spouses become co-owners of properties. They each individually owned before marriage and those acquired after. So yung mga pagmamayari ninyo individually bago kayo kinasal at pagkatapos niyong makasal ay kasama sa Absolute Community of Property and must be shared equally by husband and wife. At ito po ay nasa ilalim ng Article 91 of Family Code of the Philippines. Tanong, what happens if a public official and employee will not declare his or her salen? Failure to file salen is punishable with suspension of 1 to 6 months for the first offense and dismissal from service for the second offense. Krimin nga ba ang hindi pagpa-file ng salen? Once repeated na ang failure to file the salen, well, it constitutes culpable violation of the Constitution and at the same time, betrayal of public trust. Let's proceed with divestment. A public official or employee shall always avoid conflicts of interest. When a conflict of interest arises, he shall resign from his position in any private business enterprise within 30 days from his assumption of office and or divest himself of his shareholdings or interest within 60 days from such assumption. Ibig sabihin, kailangan daw i-avoid ang tinatawag na conflict of interest at all times. I already mentioned conflict of interest a while ago. So, if you are appointed in a public office, ngunit mayroong conflict of interest sa iyong pagtatrabaho, you are given a period of 30 to 60 days from assumption of office to divest. Kumbaga, i-divest mo ang business interest mo sa ibang tao. Maaaring ibenta mo o ipasa mo sa iba para hindi na ikaw ang magmayari niyan. Halimbawa, ikaw ay isang uh, appointed as LTO secretary. 
tapos nagmamayari ka rin ng mga bus o isang transport services, i-divest mo na. Ipasa mo sa iba kung bagay yung pagmamayari to avoid conflict of interest sa iyong opisyal na trabaho sa iyong opisina. And I hope that's clear. And remember that the same rule shall apply where the public official or employee is a partner in a partnership. The requirement of divestment shall not apply to those who serve the government in an honorary capacity, nor to laborers and casual or temporary workers. Exempted pa rin dito yung mga empleyado under honorary capacity, ano? Laborers and casual or temporary workers. Now, kapag nilabag ba ang Republic Act 6713, may parusang kulong nga ba? Walang kulong po except sa Section 7, 8, and 9 of this Act, which is punishable with imprisonment not exceeding 5 years, or if fine not exceeding 5,000 pesos, or both, and in the discretion of the Court of Competent Jurisdiction, disqualification to hold public office. Ah, uh, ano-ano nga ba yung Section 7, 8, or 9 na sinasabi natin dito which is punishable by imprisonment? Ito po ay ang prohibited acts and transactions which is financial and material interest, outside employment and other activities related thereto, disclosure and or misuse of confidential information, and lastly, yung solicitation or acceptance of gifts. At ang Section 8 naman ay ang Statement and Disclosure of an Employee's SALEN. And lastly, Section 9 is Divestment. Ito po yung mga sections of RA 6713 na punishable by imprisonment. Remember, there are also a suspension up to dismissal from office na maaaring ipataw sa isang violator or maybe a fine na equivalent sa 6 months salary ng isang empleyado depending on the gravity of the offense after due notice and hearing by the appropriate body or agency. Now, nakasaad kasi sa Section 1, Article 11 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution na public office is a public trust. Public officers and employees must at all times be accountable to the people, serve them with utmost responsibility, integrity, loyalty, and efficiency, act with patriotism and justice, and lead modest lives. So, ayan, kung gaano ka faithful or loyal sa partner mo, dapat ganun ka rin sa iyong katungkulan bilang isang empleyado ng gobyerno na mapagkakatiwalaan at maaasahan ng taong bayan. Leaving you a quote from Ken Poirot, Wherever there is power, greed, and money, there is corruption. And also, sabi rin ni Angel Goria, Integrity, transparency, and the fight against corruption have to be part of the culture. They have to be thought as fundamental values. Now, ask yourself, Am I living and behaving in accordance with the norms or standards set for government officials and employees? Take note also of this, the Decalogue of Deed. Before you leap, look. Before you take, give. Before you spend, earn. Before you criticize, wait. Before you speak, think. Before you write, ponder. Before you conclude, consider. Before you invest, investigate. Before you quit, try once more. Before you become useless, render service. Ayun, so I hope that this video finds helpful to you. And if you mind subscribing, just click that subscribe button below para updated ka when new videos are uploaded. And hope to see you on our next video. Enjoy watching and make learning a habit. Because learning is a lifelong process. That's all. Bye for now.